Up until now in this series we've seen how to construct the efficient frontier and also find the portfolio with the minimum risk and the optimum portfolio in terms of reward versus risk. This time I construct what's called the capital allocation line in Excel, a technique that can be used to adjust the risk of a portfolio to a desired level. Stay tuned. Darwin X is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, Darwin X is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, Darwin X itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The capital allocation line is a technique that allows any fund manager to adjust the overall portfolio risk by combining a higher risk asset portfolio with a risk free asset. Let's make a start. Before we get into the details of the actual calculation in Excel, it's worthwhile looking at a conceptual model of the capital allocation line to get that understanding of the objective. So we have our minimum variance frontier here in green and the black dotted line represents the efficient frontier. And we've looked at both of these concepts in previous episodes. And last time we introduced something called the risk-free rate. And we did this in order to calculate the optimal portfolio on that efficient frontier. And we continue with our use of the risk-free rate here when we talk about the capital allocation line. So on the y-axis, we can actually plot that level of return. And this provides one of the key points when we come to plot the capital allocation line. The other key point is the point on the efficient frontier that forms a tangent with this line. And the point at which this touches the efficient frontier is the point that we calculated in the previous episode. So let me try to explain how this capital allocation line is actually used. Let's say that that optimal point on the efficient frontier actually produces too much risk for a specific investor. Well, by adjusting that riskier portfolio with the risk-free asset means that we can adjust the level of risk up and down this capital allocation line. So let's look at two key points here. The first one on the left would represent if the investor was fully invested, so 100% invested in the risk-free asset. And by definition, the risk level would be zero, which is why this point is on the y-axis. And the rate of return would simply be the value on the y-axis for that risk-free return. Now, a second key point is the point at which the capital allocation line forms a tangent with the efficient frontier. And this represents being fully invested in the active portfolio. So for example, a portfolio of stocks. But as I said previously, maybe this point poses too much risk for a particular investor. And let's use an example where a specific investor has said that this is the level of risk that they would be comfortable with. So what we can do from here is go up to the capital allocation line and determine what the expected return would be for that level of risk. And because there's a formula behind this capital allocation line, it means we can obtain those key metrics of the level of risk and return by adjusting the balance between the stock portfolio and the risk-free asset. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's return to the Excel spreadsheet where we left it last time. And if you remember, we'd calculated the minimum variance frontier, which you can see as the blue line here. 
we calculated the global minimum variance portfolio, which is the point you see in yellow on the left here. And we also calculated the optimized stock portfolio, which produced these weightings for the Cisco and Pfizer stock. And that is represented by this orange point on the efficient frontier here. So let's now start to calculate the capital allocation line. So I'm going to start with a template as we have previously. And let's now start to populate the key points that we saw a moment ago on the conceptual model. So first of all, for the stock portfolio, we're going to draw our capital allocation line from the optimal point on the efficient frontier down to the location of the risk-free asset in terms of its own standard deviation and expected return. So as we know, the risk or the standard deviation of the stock portfolio that we're targeting here is from this optimized stock portfolio and so it takes this value that we have here. And equally, in terms of the expected return, that is this value here. Now, for the risk-free asset, as we've discussed, there's no such thing as a completely risk-free investment, but this is pretty much as close as you can get. And so we'll state here by definition that this is 0%. And then the expected daily return, because we're working on a daily basis for all of these values, is going to be this value we see here. And so with these two key points now, we can plot our capital allocation line. So we'll add a new data series onto our chart, and we'll call this the capital allocation line. And the X values, of course, will be the risk, which is represented by the standard deviation here and then the Y values come from the expected return. And so we now have that and this capital allocation line forms a tangent with the minimal variance frontier, which means it touches it at just one point. So the next thing we want to do is to work out where on this capital allocation line we need to be for a particular level of risk appetite. So the example I'm going to use is a risk level of 1%. So just like we have before, we're going to use the Excel data solver to find the two weightings here, one for the risky stock portfolio that you see on the left and the other weighting for the risk-free asset here that will give us this level of 1% risk. So like we did before, I'm just going to enter this as a calculation, which is 1% minus the weighting of the stock portfolio. And so as I now change that value, the other weighting automatically adjusts. And we're going to calculate our portfolio standard deviation and expected return based on these two weightings. Now for the portfolio standard deviation, we're going to return to the formula that we've seen previously, but this time we can eliminate very easily some of the parts of this formula. So for example, by definition, because the risk-free rate has a constant zero standard deviation, it means that the correlation between that and the stock portfolio will be zero. And so because that correlation coefficient you see here is zero, this third term will disappear completely. Equally, because the standard deviation is zero for the risk-free asset, one of these terms will also be zero, which means that that will disappear. So we're only left with the weight squared of the stock portfolio multiplied by the standard deviation squared of the portfolio. So we're looking at this value squared multiplied by the standard deviation of the stock portfolio squared and all of that of course needs to be part of a square root calculation and so we now have that here now in terms of the calculation of the expected return this just takes the standard calculation which is the weight of the first component multiplied by its expected return and then we add on the weight of the second component multiplied by that expected return. 
So now we can use Solver in order to get the portfolio standard deviation value of 1% as we said we were going to use in our example. So from the data menu, we can choose Solver. And our objective this time, of course, is going to be the portfolio standard deviation. But whereas before we were looking at both minimum and maximum values, this time we're going to request a specific value and that's going to be 0.01 .01, representing 1%. And the value that we're going to change in order to achieve that is this one here, which is the waiting for the stock portfolio. Click on solve. We can see that it's found a solution. And that solution is that for a stock weighting of 57% and a risk-free asset weighting of 43%, we can achieve that level of risk of 1%. So just to be certain, let's now plot this point on the chart that we have so that we can confirm where that lies on the line. So again, we're going to add another data series here and we'll call this our required portfolio. The X value is going to be the standard deviation that we've just found and the Y value will be the expected return that we've just found. And so we can see that that's being plotted on the line just here. So once again, in order to obtain this portfolio with a level of 1% risk, with a daily expected return of 0.08%, we would need a weighting of 57 and 43% for the stock and the risk-free asset respectively. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the Excel examples for portfolios with just two assets. And next time we make this much more real world when we start to extend this and look initially at three assets. And so we should be able to move through things a little bit quicker this time because we've already done it for two, but we'll repeat each of the processes. And there are some differences that you need to be aware of for our three asset portfolio. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for your time again, and do remember to subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when new episodes get released. But now, until next time, trade safe.